Welcome to the introduction for the mineral revolution. But before we look into all the details of this mineral revolution that hit South Africa, we first need to understand some context. Britain became powerful and wealthy as a result of the Industrial Revolution and was determined to build up an empire in other parts of the world, including Southern Africa. The Cape became a British colony in 1806 and the main export was wool, which was made into cloth in factories in Britain. Natal became a British colony in 1843. Here they grew crops such as cotton, coffee and tobacco for export. They started to grow sugar in the 1850s. The Orange Free State and the Transvaal were known as the Boer Republics and this is where the Dutch speaking people lived. Let's take a look at the map provided on the slide. You can see the Transvaal and the Orange Free State that has been colored in orange. That is where the Dutch speaking people were staying. The other sections that are more a mustard color, those were colonized by Britain. Before any minerals were found in South Africa in the late 19th century, South Africa was considered a poor country and was used mainly as a trade route to get to the east. Britain had already colonized large sections of the South African coast in order to protect her trade routes. Now remember, they traded by sailing in large ships. And so she would want to protect the coast of Africa to make sure that her ships would be safe. Up to the 1860s, the economy of South Africa was based on agriculture, which is farming and trade. South Africa and some neighboring countries had been divided up as British colonies. But you can see that there was also a colony owned by Germany, which later becomes known as Namibia. South Africa is very famous worldwide for its diamond and the diamond origin. In 1867, the first diamond was discovered in South Africa, in the Kimberley region, by a young shepherd by the name of Erasmus. The first diamond was discovered. It was later polished to over 10 carat yellowish diamond. In 1867, the discovery made all its way um, to Europe, to London at the time. And that actually created a lot of opportunities and business people to come to Kimberley. So the diamond rush has begun worldwide. And in fact, that actually created a lot of people coming from around the world in order to, to buy the diamond, to trade in the diamond. And, and South African diamond became world famous for the size, for the quality and for the beauty. We're sitting now about 150 years later we're still buying diamond from the same region, from Kimberley, and we continue the tradition, and South Africa still produce I mean, beautiful diamonds. And worldwide, the South African diamonds are known for the quality. And if you look at many of the international jewelry houses and diamond companies, they are still getting a lot of the sources coming from South Africa. There are other sources now that came around the world for diamonds, but I think people always remember that origin and the speciality of the South African diamonds. But what was the big deal? Why did this change things for South Africa? So what? They found a diamond. The discovery of diamonds in South Africa played an important part in the development of the country's economy. The Eureka diamond which is acknowledged to be the first diamond discovered in South Africa, was discovered in December 1866 and classified as a diamond in 1867 in the district of Hopetown. 
an area which was then regarded as no man's land, meaning not owned by anyone, and was found near Kimberley. Now remember at this stage, Britain had some colonies and the Dutch speaking people had some colonies, but this little section of land was known as no man's land. This could cause a problem because who could claim the diamonds? So they called it the diamond fields. In 1871, the diamond fields, where the first diamonds in South Africa were discovered, were proclaimed as British territory and named Griqualand West. In 1880, Griqualand West was annexed, which means it was combined as part of the Cape Colony. So the British were very clever in making it their own. Here is a more modern map of South Africa. I have circled Hopetown for you, where the first diamond was found. And if you look slightly above it, you will see Kimberley. And we will go into more detail about the diamonds found in Kimberley in our next lesson. So the finding of diamonds changed everything. South Africa was no longer seen as a poor country. Britain now had an invested interest in South Africa and wanted to control the diamond industry. Thousands of people rushed to the diamond area in the hope of finding work or to strike it lucky. Many skilled workers came from all over the world, including Britain, Australia and America, to join in the mining revolution of South Africa. The majority of unskilled labourers were from South Africa. The British officials wanted to keep control, and so they created what was known as closed compounds to control the local unskilled labourers. The discovery of the first diamond on the banks of the Orange River near Hopetown in December 1866 sparked off the development of mining in the country. It also sparked off a great many other things, including the establishment of the first stock exchange in Africa in nearby Kimberley in 1881. Other byproducts of the discovery of diamonds were two universities, those of the Witwatersrand and Pretoria, which had their origins in a school of mines set up in Kimberley in 1896. Today, the mining industry remains one of the biggest contributors to the country's economy. And now it's your turn. You will need to go to your textbook, Oxford Successful Social Sciences. You will need to go to pages 72 and you will need to read the information from pages 72 to 74. This should help you understand more about the compounds and the migrant laborers that came with the finding of diamonds in South Africa.